Hey guys, it's JP, and this time, we are going to take a look at Lettuce and Bet G'day as she recently destroyed the half marathon world record by over one minute in Valencia. She is currently the world record holder for the 5000 meter, which I actually analyzed before, the 10,000 meter, the 15k, and now, the half marathon. I have not made a running analysis video in a while, but when I saw this happen, this just had to be done, as this is one of the greatest runs I've ever seen. So in this video, I will go over this race and why this is so amazing, as well as analyzing her running mechanics as she took the half marathon world record. Now, before we get into the details of her running, let's look at how she ran this race. This only took place a few weeks ago at the end of October in the 2021 Valencia Half Marathon. I also have to note that this was actually G'day's first official half marathon too. It was one of the greatest debut races of all time. She started off strong with the first 5k split completed in 15 minutes flat. This translates to a 450 minute per mile pace. And she only goes faster from here. She ends up completing the 10K split at 29 minutes and 45 seconds. What's really crazy about this is that she is running a half marathon, yet she ran just over the 10K world record at 29 minutes and 38 seconds by only seven seconds. Now, if you thought that was impressive, just wait until you hear about the next split. At the 15K mark, she hit a 5K split in 14 minutes and 44 seconds. This also put her into a comfortable position of breaking the previous half marathon world record by over one minute, which is insane. And from here, she still stayed strong. You can see this by comparing both her running form from the beginning of the race and toward the finish line. At the end, she demolished the world record by a whole minute with a time of 62 minutes and 52 seconds. As I mentioned before, what makes this even crazier is that this is her debut race for this distance, so she still may have the potential to go even faster as she gains experience with this kind of distance. Now that we covered just how incredible the race was, let's go into a little more detail and look at the way she ran. I won't cover all the minute details in this kind of video, but I will cover a few of them. Honestly, just by watching her here, where she is at the very end of the race running at record breaking speeds, I can tell that instead of being a running analysis video, this will probably end up being more of a running form appreciation video. With this being said, the first thing we could talk about here is the consistency throughout the race. As I just mentioned, for this being at the end of a race with an average pace well below five minutes per mile, she looks so strong. You can compare this to her running during the first 5k split. Comparing these clips, there is not too much of a significant difference in running form. For those who have ran distances like this before, you especially understand that this not only speaks to her physical fitness, but also her mental discipline as well. Now, another thing we can appreciate here is her step rate. As you can see, she pretty much maintains a step rate of around 180 steps per minute. This is noted not only at the end of the race, but also throughout the race as well. Now I do want to mention that while this kind of cadence has been commonly seen in elite distance runners, this does not mean it is a number you should absolutely strive for. This is because step rate can vary based on you, such as the length of your legs, as well as the relative intensity of the pace you are running at. For example, for an average person to try to run at this pace, this may be very hard for them to maintain this speed. Therefore, it would not be unusual to see that person running at a higher step rate of 200 steps per minute and up. This is because the higher the intensity of the pace you are running at, the higher your preferred step rate will be. Another thing I tend to look at when someone is running is the foot strike pattern. Now this can be pretty tough to decipher in this video due to the quality of the footage and the limited frame rate. However, what we can gather from this video is that she seems to be landing more around the midfoot region as she does not seem to be landing too close to the heels or toward the toes. This can make a difference as this can change the way forces are distributed through the body. 
if you land closer to the heels, forces may be distributed less on the calf region and more into the knees. However, if you land more toward the forefoot area, forces may be distributed less on the knees and more into the calf muscle complex. Now, I won't go too much into detail of the general implications of foot strike here. However, if you are interested, I discussed this in a previous video. Now, while you can gather more information from this side view, it is also important to look at it in this view too. When analyzing running footage, it is good to look at it from multiple views. There are some things you can note here that you can't really see from a side view. One is the arm swing from here. You will notice that there is no excessive rotation of the arms as her hands don't really cross midline of her body. Another thing you could pay attention to is her head position. This can be a way to clue in on how the body moves side to side. Here, she pretty much keeps the head in a relatively neutral position and her torso in an upright posture with minimal side to side movement going on. When some people get fatigued as they run, especially at the end of the race, this side to side sway of the head and torso can increase. However, we don't really see that from her here. And those are some things you can appreciate as you watch Let's Embed G'day run. I hope you found this video interesting. I have not made a video like this in a while, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you for watching.